on um, this episode of Church on the Air, I'm bringing the word of the Lord to us titled Power of Endless Life. Power of Endless Life. One of the exclusive uh, privilege we've got as God's children is uh, unprecedented access to the power of endless life. And that's so beautiful, that's so powerful, that's such a blessing. First, I want you to know that eternal life has been promised to man before the creation began. That's before time began, before the heaven and earth was created. God promised eternal life to man. And um, eternal life is the promise of God. I'm going to talk about what is the promise of God. It's life everlasting. And so beautiful. God, heaven has promised us life everlasting, like I said, before the foundation of the earth. So it's like eternal life is the most prized treasure in the realm of the spirit. It is the most prized treasure in the realm of the spirit. And eternal life is the spiritual force upon which the ultimate victory, our ultimate victory over darkness, over death, over destruction is going to be, you know, is going to ride on. So eternal life is very, very critical, very, very important to us. And also I must refresh your um, memory and your understanding, your knowledge of the world that in the, at the garden, uh, Eden, when God, after God created Adam and Eve and placed them in the garden, and he instructed them to tend the garden, and from there, he asked them to, you know, spread wild and take charge of the earth. I just want to uh, remind you that uh, God created man to have great and, you know, uh, uh, massive dominion over creation over the earth and instructed man to take charge to take absolute control to be fruitful to be to multiply to replenish the earth to fill it and to subdue it you know that that uh, uh, all of that are multi-facet expression of our dominion mandate and um we could see from god's word that that having done, even though God created man to be as a supreme being, God created man as a supernatural being, God created man to be so much power and influence over the earth, God promised man something, which is eternal life. He instructed man to feed on the tree of life. Why he forbade man from feeding on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So that is to say that in order for man to have eternal life, it was essential that man first be tested and proven. God needed to have man to be tested and proven before he could be entrusted with eternal life. That is to say that we will not inherit eternal life in abundant measure except we are first tested and proven so we could see these precedents in the garden that man needed to be tested and proven by god before god will entrust eternal life to them and unfortunately man fell and as a result forfeited eternal life Man fell, and as a result, forfeited eternal life. Um, let's go through the scriptures just to, you know, uh, back up and just uh, uh, establish some of the things we've just said about eternal life. First to Titus, excuse me, Titus chapter 1. Titus 1, we read verse, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, Paul a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect. So, the, you know, he's talking about 
the ministry gift of Christ through Paul is apostolic grace and it's the servanthood, servanthood of God. Uh, to, it's, it, it was intended to reinforce the faith of God's elect. So the gift, the ministry gift of the Spirit are intended to build our faith. And the Bible says when our faith is being built, our faith is being built on, paraphrase, and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness. So we can see from God's word that our faith grows as we come to the place of understanding of the truth of God's word with which furnishes our, our lives with godliness. So faith, our faith grows or develops as we come to the place of acknowledgement or internalizing the truth of God's word. And the truth, when the truth of God's word, the knowledge of the truth is internalized by us, it produces character. Praise God. So because if we're going to talk about eternal life, we will not have eternal life except the church develops in character. We must be built in character. Character is a manifestation of God's nature and attributes in us. But we will not develop and mature spiritually and be built in character without acknowledging the truth of God. The truth of the word of God Acknowledging the truth of the word of God is to internalize it. It's not to be passive. It's not just to exercise a passive approach to the preaching, teaching, declaration, or study of the truth of God's word. God wants us to effectively acknowledge or internalize the truth of God's word. That's why the Lord Jesus, oftentimes when he talks about what sort of attitude and comportment do we put up when it comes to the word of God, he said, take heed. We need to be thorough. We need to be attentive. We need to be deliberate in our approach to, you know, uh, uh, towards God's word. Then verse 2, it says, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised when? Before the world began. God has promised us eternal life before existence, before creation was brought forth. We've been promised eternal life. So that's the ultimate treasure of God for man, that we will have eternal life. This hope of eternal life comes when we submit to the dealing of God. When, the, when Christ is being formed in us, then we qualify for eternal life so it is very important there's no way we will receive eternal life when we live in rebellion we can't have eternal life when we're not growing in grace when we're not obeying when we're not being led by the spirit so but the beautiful thing is that eternal life is a target eternal life is our ultimate end that is what heaven has promised us before the world began so let, let's say another scripture first uh John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, we read verse 23 to 25. There's a New Testament scripture. The Bible says, Whoever, excuse me, whosoever den denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. But that therefore, that therefore abide in you which we have heard from the beginning if that which we have heard from the beginning shall remain in you you also shall continue in the son and in the father and this is a promise that he hath promised us even eternal life so the scripture makes it so clear there's no way we will deny the son and the father their pleasure and we will qualify to receive eternal life so we must believe in to please him and the only way we can please the father is when we when he sees us and he sees his son in us so as christ is being formed in us 
then we are making ourselves legally uh, 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 feet for eternal life. Christ must be formed in us. That we, we must be a replica of the Father. So the Bible says that we, we have heard from the beginning. This beginning isn't talking about beginning of time. It's talking about beginning which predated existence. Predated time. Only God exists in the beginning. But the beautiful thing is that as we are becoming true replica of the Son of God, we will have eternal life. And it is eternal life that will integrate us to the beginning. Eternal life is meant to incorporate us to the beginning. And we will be exactly like God. That is the ultimate promise of God to us. The ultimate promise of God to us is divinity. We will be exactly like him who is the ep epitome of the beginning. And that, that, that's really beautiful and that's such a blessing. Now, let, let's, let's come back because I, I believe that is deep. Because the promise of eternal life, you know, transcend, excuse me, the promise of eternal life transcend the reality of this present existence that is fading away. The promise of, this, of eternal life transcend the reality of the present existence that is fading away the reality of the present existence is that we get bored in life we get bored with life the reality of this present existence is that we get sick and tired the reality of this present existence is that we're very volatile as human beings we could become very angry and we could switch off we could sleep in we could sleep into depression we're very volatile. We could easily slip into bitterness and offense. Over the minutest issue somebody did, does against you. All those fra fragility, all those volatility simply shows that the flesh is frail. And the flesh is transient. And that's the reason why our reality must transcend, must transcend this present existence. This present existence is liable to corruption, to decaying. Well, so what I'm saying is that this is what shows we are spiritual. What shows we are spiritual is that what makes man become, you know, busted and makes man to lose it and makes man to become offended does not make you offended. That is eternal life. What, what that simply means that what breaks down the defense of humanity doesn't break down your defense. What brings man to the state of hopelessness and uncertainty doesn't do that with you. Because what eternal life does is that it reinforces the solidity of the kingdom on the inside of you. Eternal life, you know, and entrenches the kingdom of God in your soul and makes you to become an immovable mountain. Immovable rock in the face of crisis of life. And that's why we must press into eternal life. We must stretch ourselves to lay hold on eternal life. So that, so that you know, the, the mess, the messes of life. You know, the mess, the mess, mess of offense. Mess of bitterness. You know, a, a whole lot of life. This present life is messy. And the only way to transcend that is to lay hold on eternal life. Now back to foundation, praise the Lord. You know, you know when, when I scratch my head, what I remember is that part of what they told us is that we should limit contact around our faith. You know, let, let me say this, you know, honestly, try as much as you could to observe the, the uh, uh, procedures. Try as much as you could. You know, keep safe, you know, uh, uh, and be safe. Try as much as you could. Use sanitizers and, you know, let's not be careless. Because the Bible didn't say that, you know, every one of you that is stupid enough to drink poison, I will save. 
The Bible didn't say that. The Bible say, if, paradventure. So, and you know something about the power of eternal life? Paradventure. Coronavirus. Drop a droplet of coronavirus drop on any part of your body. Even if it is your nose, it will die. Amen. That is the dimension of conviction. You know, every other force responds to the force of faith. And eternal life is birth through the power of faith. Through the force of faith. The power of endless life. And we are busting into it. Amen. Our conviction is not based on what is possible in this world. Our conviction is based on that which this world cannot contain. And we must understand that. But so what I'm simply saying that that's not to say that you may not fall sick. If you fall sick, God will heal you. Amen. But I'm even telling you that you are pressing into God to the point that if any virus or bacteria that causes sickness drop on you, this is the time. Because that, those, you know, that, those dimensions are possible in Christ. In the kingdom, they are possible. They are, they are spiritual reality. They are dimensions. They are, what, what, what I'm saying is that they are, you know, are realms and frequencies in God that exist. And some people have accessed them and plugged into them at some point or the other. It's your turn. Amen. It is your turn. Amen. It is your turn to defy the, the odds of this life. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so we're establishing the fact that eternal life is the ultimate prize. The eternal life is the ultimate pressure and the, the ultimate promise of God to us. And the purpose of, it, of, eternal, of God promising us eternal life is that God wants us to inherit him. He wants us to inherit divinity. He wants to incorporate us into the realm and reality and power with which he exists. And that power can be measured. And that's so beautiful. Now, but in getting that done, we need to first of all get the basics right. And the basics we need to get right is that we must understand that Christ Jesus died for us and was raised on the third day so that we might be saved. Isn't that so? So what that simply means that Christ Jesus, I'm going to rephrase it, died for us. He died for our sins and was raised on the third day so that we might have life. Isn't that what the Bible says? It's so that we might have what? Life everlasting. And because of life everlasting, we will not face eternal damnation. That is our reality. You know, even at this, in this life and in the, in the world to come. You know, when we receive life, there's some, this is what shows that you are saved. And you're a child of God, you're born again. When you come to a place of belief and a place of forgiveness of our sin and sin has been eradicated from your spirit, you just have that peace and inner assurance that eternity is settled. Eternity with God is resolved. And such assurance, you need it. If you are yet to come to the saving knowledge of Christ, this is the time to make that decision. Beyond the success of this world, Beyond the money and the wealth and the azul of this world. You, this world is transient. It is passive. You need an assurance that secures your eternal destiny. You need an assurance rather that secures your eternal destination. It is more important than anything... We could ever gain in this world so it's 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 just very much established that christ jesus you know uh, uh, died for us the purpose of the cross is so that we will have eternal life and we are born again we're new creation in christ jesus the new birth that has happened to our spirit is a product of eternal life when the bible says uh you know uh if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The word new there is taken from the word that means, you know, uh, kainos. And the word kainos means a state of constant newness. You know, everything that is brand new. It's not just the word brand new. The word brand new means something is presently, currently new. 
And from that moment, decay is already setting. Yes. From the moment anything is manufactured or created, it starts depreciating in value. But the word newness, kainos, is a, a state of constant newness. That is, is a state in which decay is defiled. So a decay is completely negated. Corruption is not at work. That is what has happened to your spirit. And that is what God is doing with your soul. And that's what will ultimately happen to your body. And that is so beautiful. That, that means decay will cease over us. And that is, you know, outside of God, life is doomed. This is life. Amen. Amen. A reality and understanding, a perception that is deeper and transcend time. And that is so beautiful. You know, that's so powerful, that's so beautiful. That, that's, that's lovely. Amen. Amen. So the new birth itself is a product of Zoe. And what the new birth, <coughs> excuse me, what the new birth uh, offered us is that <coughs> one significant thing the new birth offered us is that our previously severed uh, uh, connection with God has been restored. What, what the new birth, you know, provide also is, is that our previously uh, 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 alienated relationship with God is restored. And that is so beautiful. We have right of access to his law. Right of access to his presence. We, our, our, our legal stance with God has been validated. We have right standing with him. And that's so beautiful. You are God's representative in the earth. Where you are standing, the kingdom of God, eternity recognizes you. Our legal stance with God is validated by the power of the new creature and that is so beautiful the new creation in christ jesus has ensured the validation of our legal stands with god we have righteousness we have been gifted righteousness and that is so beautiful everyone recognizes you god knows you amen, amen. now furthermore we've, we've established the fact that the purpose of the new birth, the purpose of the cross is so that we can have eternal life. And uh, we must also understand that eternal life was actually intended by God so that we uh, will become like him. We, we've already established that. God's, the intent of, the intent of heaven for our, our eternal life for giving us eternal life so that we will become like him and that's that's so beautiful so I, I want to also submit to us that the consequence of the transformative impact of eternal life is the annulment of decaying in us that is, to, I will say that again, that the consequence of the transformative impact of eternal life is the annulment of decaying in us. What that simply means is that as the more we have life, let me say this, eternal life is given to us in measure. Eternal life is given to us in measure that is after having received salvation you remember the word of god says in john chapter 5 verse 26 that um i forgot him the bible says uh he that has the son has life i hope that's what it says that's not what that can somebody read that john chapter 5 verse 26 thank you very much thank you for as the father has life in himself so has he given to the son to also have life either as the son has life and either as not the son has not life i'm going to put it in a more contemporary terms 
you know, uh, if you read some of the contemporary uh, uh, scriptures, what that simply means is that it is eternal life that substantiates divinity in God. That is, God is all he is because of eternal life. Eternal life is, if I could say, eternal life is a control system. Eternal life is the, is the, eternal life is the divine substance that is in God that makes him all that he is. God is merciful because of eternal life. So the divine substance that is in God that makes him all that he is, the essence of divinity of eternal life. God is a God of justice because of eternal life. God is, 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 is uh, faithful because of eternal life. God is all powerful because of eternal life. And that, now the scripture has now told us he has also given to Christ Jesus, the pattern son of God. What uh, 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 it is eternal life that, the, that accredits and validate Christ as God's own mouthpiece, as the ultimate authority in the earth, Christ Jesus. So the Bible then tells us that if we become like the Son of God, the, let me put it this way, the more we grow and mature unto sonship, the more eternal life we are. So eternal life is given to us in measure. The more we please God, the more we align with the will of God, the more life we receive. The more life we receive. And when we receive life, something changes in us. When we receive life, something gives. What gives is called the power of corruption. Death is at work on, in, on, in humanity since the fall. Death is at work. But the redemption in Christ Jesus has created a way of escape. Yes, and that escape ultimately is going to happen when the church emerges by the force, the church emerges and rides on the wings of the force of eternal life. So what, 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 what we're simply saying is that it is eternal life that reverses and negates the power of death. Eternal life reverses the power of, of, of decaying. The process of decaying is actually broken through eternal life. And that's why having life is very important. So we have sickness because, today because of decaying. We have all sorts of negativity that we have today is as a result of corruption and decaying. So the answer to them is life everlasting. Hallelujah. So, so, so that's, 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 that's the point. And that is the will of God. That is what God is up to. So God wants to change us and transform us so that uh, uh, the power of death or decaying over our system, our soul and our body will be broken. And as the power of death is being broken over our soul, the decaying, I'm talking about self, I'm talking about the sin nature, I'm talking about thought in our thought, I'm talking about in our intent, in our life, as the power of death and the hold of lust, the flesh is being broken. The hold of flesh, everything is entrenched in the flesh or self. As it is being broken, then we overcome decay. Then we overcome corruption. And the implication of that is that we will then epitomize the age to come. God is raising a generation of people that will epitomize the age to come. I'm talking about a generation of people who will embody eternal life. Then they will be the answer to the activities of death in the world. Amen. The answer to the operation of decaying out there in the world system. Let's go through a scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 50 to 54. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50 to 54. The Bible says, Now these I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doeth corruption 
inherit incorruption. So God is already giving us, certain, telling us, this is my standard, the kingdom. The kingdom is the answer to all the complexities of this world. The kingdom is the solution to the problems of humanity. But I'm raising the people who will inherit the kingdom. The kingdom is not gifted to us. The kingdom is not gifted man. We don't, God does not gift us. There are so many things he gifts us. Praise God. New birth is a gift. Hallelujah. But the kingdom is not a gift. The kingdom is not a gift. In order to have the kingdom, we must be stripped of the flesh and blood. What that means is that we must submit to the word of God and allow the word of God to liberate us from the control of the flesh. We must daily crucify the flesh. Allow the power of the Holy Spirit be at work in us through the leading of the Spirit to overcome the flesh. We must break free from the control and the power of the sin nature. That is the only way to inherit the kingdom. And when we inherit the kingdom, we will give up corruption. And when we inherit the kingdom, we will uh, uh, be absorbed into incorruption. And uh, the word incorruption is taken from the root word af aftasia. Sorry, is the aftasia? Yeah, I think so. Aftasia. And the word aftasia. Sorry. Okay. Aphasia. The word aphasia, thank you very much. The word aphasia means two things. It means purity of thoughts. Purity, sincerity of art. So that means what God is doing now is purifying us, is cleansing us. The one, then the word aphasia also means perpetuality. It means a frequency of life that transcends time. A frequency of life that transcends that transcends that transcends time and that is what god is doing with us the, as as the spirit of god is purging us and cleansing us on the inside as heaven is consecrating us it will so purge us and rid us of of the elements of the carnal nature to the point that we will break through time and our reality will change. We will access the unseen reality in God. And that is so powerful. Our reality will be governed by a different law. We will be able to activate the power of endless life. We will inherit incorruption. We will inherit incorruption. You see, that is what we are living for. That is why... We are willing to pay the price. Any price whatsoever because of the price. The price is in Christ Jesus. The price is the age to come. The price is incorruptibility. And that's what we are longing for. We are pressing for. Verse 51, the Bible says, Behold, I show you a mystery. Ye, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Now, I must also let us know that the word change is a unique use of the word change. The word change is taken from the root word uh, 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 a lasso. And the word, and, you know, I, I don't want you to get uh, and combined with what is the Greek word or Hebrew word. But what I'm simply saying is that there are other parts of the Bible where the scripture used a different word that means change. There's a word that implies change that means growth or met, is the word metamorpho. I've introduced another one. The word, if you do science, metamorphosis, that is to grow from one state to another state. So that is the daily change that must happen to us. We must grow. We must be transformed from one state to another state, from one form to another form. We must mature and develop spiritually. And if that is taking place daily in our lives, 
where we are overcoming where we are overcoming lust of the flesh lust of the eyes and pride of life then this ultimate change you will experience this ultimate change is a sovereign change it's, it's triggered by the sovereignty of god it's, it, that's the change alasso you know and that really doesn't matter what it means the important thing is that you know that this change is what would is is this change is a change that will orchestrate you know uh, 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 incorruptibility in us this is a change that will sort of uh, uh, integrate us into the world to come release us into it's a sudden change the bible says for this corruption no okay i'll skip well, verse 51 in a moment the word moment there is the word atom uh, uh, you know uh, 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 atomos which means uh, atom an atom of time indivisibility the bible says in the moment in the twinkling of an eye that is suddenly just when you blink the bible says at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed we shall be alassoed if you, if you will so what the bible simply is saying is that there is a last trump if there is a last trump that means there must have been the first trump there are successions of trump when those trumpets sound something happened to you something happened in the world hallelujah so what we're saying is that as we're going through you see life is a very complex uh, uh form of spiritual connectivity what that means that everything connects what happens to you affect the world and as as a child of god you must understand what whatever happens to you affect the world whatever you allow in your life is not just affecting you it's going to affect a generation in your loins so and whatever happens to you affect the world when it trump sounds it announces and orchestrate a new a new season over us seasons of god's dealing seasons of spiritual awakening we must be sensitive those trumps represent prophetic pronouncement and orchestrations of seasons those trump don't only represent prophetic pronouncement that orchestrate seasons of god's dealing in your life they also represent the prophetic proclamation over the universe that invoke events and happenings in the earth there are some trump that will sound and there could be global crisis we see that in the book of revelation there, there are some trump there are some trump that will sound and pestilence will be released in the earth so that's why i'm letting you know that this coronavirus is not by apple stands no. <laughs> nothing happened without the knowledge of the one whom we deal with And when each of the trumps sound, you cannot afford to be as confused yeah. as the inhabitants of the earth. Yeah. Because what the scripture says many times is that war to the inhabitants of the earth. You are the ones that will serve as God's instrument of intervention. That will bring liberation and deliverance to humanity. There is a groaning going on in the world this coronavirus you know COVID 19 is intended to further echo the groaning the cry for deliverance the cry and yearning for liberation that darkness is suffocating humanity and humanity is struggling crying a cry of terror under the weight of decay in other words there is a need 
and there is a desperate need for divine intervention. There's a desperate need for saviors to arise from Zion. So that's why you must hear that cry too. The way you hear the cry, your response to the cry must be different to the response of the inhabitants of the earth. Your response to the cry is that, Lord, change must come. I must change. I must change. I must change. The glory of God must exude through me. I must change. I must have a word. I must stand in the place of influence. I must stand in the place. I must occupy the place of authority. I must stand to, 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 to concentrate the impact of God's glory and power upon creation. That's, that must be the cry. The cry is that high must serve as the entry point by which heaven will bring deliverance to the earth that must be the cry that's why you must know you mustn't be lost in the cry in the in the cry i'm, I'm talking about the 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 cry of the, the you know of wailing you mustn't be lost in the midst of wailing and confusion and despair a voice of assurance must arise from you a voice of encouragement a voice a sound of symphony must rise up from deep within you you must not be lost in the cloud hallelujah so when we begin to see this kind of traumatic development you know uh, uh reoccur in the in the earth you must respond in a different form your response must be that, Lord, I desire both metamorph. I desire to first metamorpho. I desire to change. I desire to mature. I desire to grow. I desire to develop. I must long to press into the power of endless life. I must long for incorruption. I must long for change that brings that bring forth incorruption. That's, that must be our desire. Our desire is that when we hear the sound of, of from time to time, there must be regular change, consistent change. There must be consistent change. There must be transformative change. Until ultimately we eat a mark. And then there's an orchestration of the sovereignty of God that brings an, a sudden change. An instantaneous change the ultimate change and the bible says when that change occur for these corruptible must put on incorruptible incorruption and this mortal this mortal must put on immortality the bible says so when these corruptible shall have put on incorrupt incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory O death where is thy sting O grave where is thy victory that is going to be your final song that will be your final song and that song is going to reverberate through your life through your experience in christ jesus so one thing that we must realize you know from time to time like we continue to say the more you have zoe zoe is the greek word for divine life the life of god the more you have the life of god zoe the more you become like him the more you have the life of god zoe the more you become like him uh, to have Zoe the more comes through activating the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus. To have Zoe the more comes by activating the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus. You know, the word law, if you read Romans 8, because of time, we're not going to be able to go there. The word law is taken from the root word nomos. 
and nomos means it doesn't mean stipulated commandments no it doesn't mean don't do this do this no but instead it means operational principles that releases specific forces so every principle releases a force that sustains that principles the principle of gravity activates the force of gravity that makes certain possibilities that you know certain stride to take place so uh, if you throw anything up it comes down that's the power of gravity but there's another force that defies gravity it calls the force of flight the law of flight you know that the force of flight that is operated by the law of aer aerodynamics but uh, the aircraft operate in that dimension they defy gravity so the same thing there's a law that is at work in every human being it is called the law of sin and death and that law is at work and because of that law man is susceptible to sicknesses man is susceptible to depression man is susceptible to uh, weariness man is susceptible to unforgiveness man is susceptible to pain man is susceptible to betrayal because of the law of sin and death but when we activate a superior law the only superior law is the law of spirit of life in christ jesus and when we activate that law the law of sin and death is defied and that is what god expects of us there's just a few basic things i'm just going to state one of the way to set the law of spirit of life in christ jesus because without it we have we will not have eternal life one of the way to set the law of spirit of life in christ jesus is to ensure constant renovation of our soul by the word of god constant renovation of our soul by the word the word of god must renew your mind the word of god must change your thinking the word of god must completely revamp your attitude and your motive everything about you must be constantly constantly you know transformed and changed and renovated by the word of god another thing that is very important if we have eternal life more and more and more is that we must daily die to self we must daily die to self the more we die to self the more we have eternal life the more we die to self the more we have eternal life and having eternal life interestingly is, is that it's what, what it does with us is that we become god's instrument of validation of righteousness in the earth and that is so powerful at the same time we become god's instrument of annihilation of iniquity in the earth and that is so beautiful god begins to use you and i to judge iniquity your lifestyle your lifestyle whenever you like whenever you whenever you where, whenever you step in and you get involved wickedness is being reversed wickedness is being judged wickedness loses its hold in that atmosphere in that environment in the, over that situation that you know what, what partnership whatever it is and that is so beautiful and that is what god wants to do with us finally i'm going to read a few scriptures in closing and um, share a testimony very important you can't miss this testimony to uh buttress and back up this message eternal life it is the desire and the will of god that we you and i it is the will of god that we experience the foretaste of the age to come in this present life it is God's desire and the will of God that you and I experience the foretaste of the age to come in this present life. Let me share with us from a few scriptures. Uh, first, uh, 
First John, First Timothy chapter four, verse seven and eight. First Timothy four, seven and eight. The Bible says, "But refi refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness." For bodily exercise profit a little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. So the scripture is telling us that we need to understand that physical exercise I, I, I like a uh, better translation because this scripture is originally captured as essential is a little profit of bodily exercise. So what that simply means, because some people read the scripture and say, and, and some people like to read the scripture upside down. What that means, I'm just, they just, because they already have an, a position and they, they're just looking for anything that will stamp it. So it's like the Bible says we should not exercise ourselves. All this, you know, uh, uh, dieting and physical exercise is because you are free, you are frivolous, and you are looking for God, anything to back you up, to back up your greed and your uh, uh, lack of discipline, gluttony. You just want to back it up. Our excesses. That's not what the Bible says. And the Bible says, in fact, even look bodily exercise profit a little. But from the original rendition, essential is the little profit of the body of bodily exercise. God wants you to ensure your physical fitness and your psychological fitness, your mental fitness. God wants you to improve yourself in whatever field of life. You be the best at it, is the will of God. But you must understand that in Christ Jesus, in the kingdom, life transcends what will come through natural physical literal development god wants us to exercise ourselves in godliness but if you're going to exercise yourself in godliness the bible says we need to refrain from certain habits and tendencies the scriptures made it so clear we should we should refuse profane and old wives fables that is we should let go of gossip and let go of strife some of those excesses we cannot have the kingdom we cannot lay hold on eternal life when you have all of those nonsense around you and in your life so the bible says that when we exercise ourselves in godliness we can have the promise of god that is now is and that which is to come that is to say let me put it in another word the promise of god is meant to secure the age to come the promise of god is life everlasting through the promise of god we can lay hold on incorruption and on immortality i told us what incorruption is aphtasia which means purity internal purity and which also means transcending a reality that transcends time perpetuality the word immortality is the word you know athanasia you know athanasia means deathlessness praise god that is decay is reversed so that that is what constitutes the age to come praise god so through eternal life we can what lay hold on the age to come shall i shock you through eternal life the age to come could find the expression even in time God is raising a generation of people that whose life will serve as a foretaste of the age to come, even in this present life. Instead of making it three, let's just do one more. You know, I said three scriptures, so we've read one. Let's just do one more and we wrap it up. Very simple scripture. John chapter 5. We read verse 25 and 26. The Bible says, 
The Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Isn't that powerful? Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus said, That hour is coming. But that hour will first of all come now, and it will yet then come. That is to say, Jesus is saying that I'm about to die, and resurrection is going to happen. Amen. Amen. But a generation will come as a result of my resurrection that will walk in the frequency of resurrection. Yeah. And that means resurrection is accessible to us now. What did I say? Resurrection is accessible to us now. We can touch it. We can live it. We can lay hold on it. Now the scripture goes on to say, For as the Father has life in himself, so has he given to the Son to have life in himself also. So the Bible is saying to us that, God, let me, ref let me put it, the Bible is saying to us in essence, is that God only entrusts eternal life to his Son. Isn't that so? The word Son is what mature, a mature child. So as we mature spiritually, what are we doing? We are making we are making case for eternal life. As we become redundant and become uh, 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 per adventure, we become redundant and uh, we retard spiritually. We're losing ground of eternal life. But as we mature spiritually, we're what? Making case for eternal life. We can lay hold on eternal life and it's only those who lay hold on eternal life that will access resurrection. I'll say that again. Resurrection, what the Lord Jesus is saying, resurrection is accessible and attainable now. But it is only those who lay hold on eternal life that will be able to access and attain resurrection. Those who lay hold on eternal life are those who mature unto sonship. Maturing unto sonship is making case for eternal life. I give a practical example. There's a man by the name John Gilly. Many of us know him. There was an account of him in his time. There was an outbreak of pestilence in South Africa. And this particular virus was killing people. People were dying en masse. So John G. Lake, a great man of God, joined uh, in uh, helping to clear the corpse. So they clear the corpse and clear the corpse and clear the corpse and bury the people and bury the people. Himself and a friend of his that they were, you know, I learned they were praying together, a Dutch individual. They praying together and sharing the world together and growing. He was a missionary in South Africa and nobody knew him. So there came a time an international health body arrived and they just came to offer help and bring, you know, uh, 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 food substance and drug and, and, you know, materials to help protect the people at the time. So then they called the workers together and they saw John G. Lake and the Dutch guy. How come you guys are not dressed and you know as in like put on the uh uh protective uh kids before getting involved in this exercise then they said they don't need it he said why don't you need it he said we already have on the law of of eternal life the guy said what nonsense is this both of you are walk are a walking dead he said, it's a matter of time. You would drop down dead. You have physical contact with people who are dead as a result of the outbreak of this virus. He said, can I have a bit of the foam from the mouth of one of the cops? He used it with his bare eye and put it under their microscope and they checked it. All the virus were dead. He said, that is the reason why nothing will hurt us. 
that is scary but that is so encouraging at this time we can operate in that dimension that the dead we hear the voice of christ in us and leave resurrection is possible that any virus that come in contact with you will just die but it is possible that's why we activated we activated the kingdom of god must be real to us we lay hold on the kingdom whose maker and foundation is god we must see the kingdom we must desire the kingdom. john Gillick was just a normal a, a, a human being like us as a matter of fact that south africa previously before this time he lost his wife in south africa i, I think to yellow fever she died but he was not discouraged he keep digging into the world then john Gillick said for a whole year he has been studying about zoe the life of god he's been reading the scripture he's been internalizing it when he got back to america in one of the cities in washington state he preached eternal life for many years i can't remember the period of time then there came a time people were getting healed and getting ill I, I, I don't also have the figures. Several, several hundreds of thousands got ill through the ministry of John G. Lake. And not only that, that city, Spoke, was, Spoke was declared the healthiest city in the world. Officially, because of the ministry of John G. Lake. What a great man. But you know what? There are many John G. Lakes in this room. Many John G. Lakes out there in the world. Many people that the power of eternal life is going to be mightily at work in. And every germs and virus, every form of operation of decay comes in contact with you and die. Let us pray. Father Lord, I speak over this airwave. As many people are listening and watching under the sound of my voice. Lord, I pray that all of them including myself will not only touch but enter the frequency of resurrection Amen. everything dead around you will respond Amen. nations will respond Amen. dry bones that are you know you know are, are entrenched in the nations in the global economy and different aspects of the world system we hear your voice and come in contact with you and leave in the name of jesus i hereby send for the word of god i send for the power of god i send for the voice of christ the son of god i send for the voice of resurrection and the power of resurrection into your finances and command it to leave i send it into the economy of the nations and command it to leave i send the power of righteousness into the chaos and confusion of nigerian political system and i command it to leave in the name of jesus i send the power of resurrection into your family and command it to leave every form of death and decay must give way i command the power of resurrection into your body and command it to leave every dead organ must come to alive every 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 part of your body that is hurting must receive life and come alive in the name of jesus i release eternal life upon the nations i release eternal life into china i release eternal life into australia i release eternal life into Italy, eternal life into United States of America. I release eternal life into United Kingdom, eternal life. I release eternal life into Iran. I release eternal life. We discharge eternal life into Spain. We release and discharge eternal life into Singapore, into Malaysia. We release and discharge eternal life into India, into Pakistan. We release and discharge eternal life into the continent of Africa. We release eternal life into Nigeria, into Lagos. We release eternal life and let the nation live again 
in the name of Jesus, we release eternal life. We command coronavirus, COVID-19. We decree and sentence you dead in the name of Jesus. We decree and sentence you dead in the name of Jesus. Within one week, let there be a reversal. Within one week, let there be a breakthrough. Within one week, let your grip over the nations be broken in the name of Jesus. Lord, we exalt you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much for tuning in. Let me also say this. I want to encourage us. Uh, we're putting together a seven days prayer and fasting. And, um, you know, if you could join us, if you could fast till 12, fantastic, to 3, that's okay. But between the period of 6 and 7 p.m. each day, throughout the seven days, we're going to be praying and we're going to speak in the world over the nations. That Christ, the light of the world, will visit the nation. We're going to be speaking the world. And in the course of that, we are vanquishing coronavirus in the earth. We're establishing peace over the nations. So for a period between 6 and 7 a.m., I'm 7 p.m., we're going to be praying and we will make it live. And um, if I'm right, what's, tom what's tomorrow's date? So it's between 23rd and 29th of March. Thank you very much. God bless you.